We all know that ZBrush is the best 3D sculpting software in the world. But did you know that some of its best features were taken from another 3D sculpting software? A rising star that many believed started to threaten ZBrush's position in the late 2000s. So what did Pixelogic, the company behind ZBrush, do? Yes, they bought it. But what is this software? And what are those features that made Pixelogic drool over it and feel threatened at the same time? The 3D sculpting software I'm talking about is called Sculptress, and I believe the majority of veteran ZBrush users have heard about it. So where do we start? Sculptress was created by Thomas Peterson, a Swedish programmer and 3D enthusiast, and he worked on it as a personal project around 2009. He actually wanted to create a simple, intuitive digital sculpting tool that anyone could use without a steep learning curve. Because to be honest, ZBrush was and it is still hard to learn to a certain extent, especially for beginners. So unlike more complex 3D sculpting software, Sculpture is focused on a user-friendly interface and a sculpting experience that mimicked working with clay. One of its groundbreaking features was its dynamic tessellation, which allowed users to sculpt freely without worrying about the underlying mass structure. So the artist sculpts, the software automatically refined and added geometry when needed making it easy to create detailed models from basic shapes. This unique approach made sculptures popular, especially among hobbyists, in addition to professionals looking for a quick way to prototype or create something organic really quickly. Now let's dive a bit deeper in the nitty-gritty details. When Pixelogic acquired Sculptress, they hired its developer, Thomas Peterson, which was a good thing. Actually, it was a smart move. They gradually integrated some of its key features into ZBrush to make sculpting more intuitive and accessible, especially for beginners. And here are some of the main features that made the leap from Sculptress into ZBrush. Of course, Dynamic Tessellation, aka Sculptress Pro. This is the most significant feature adopted from Sculptress, which allowed users to sculpt freely without worrying about topology. In ZBrush, this was rebranded as Sculptures Pro Mode, which was introduced later on. So it lets artists add details exactly where needed by dynamically adding or reducing mesh density based on brush strokes without needing to subdivide the entire model. In addition, Sculptures had easy-to-use mirror symmetry, which influenced how symmetry tools were made more attractive in ZBrush updates, including live symmetry preview lines and easy toggling. We can also mention the smooth behavior of brushes, which influence some ZBrush brushes as well, particularly those in the Sculptures Pro mode, which can handle surface transitions, especially in organic modeling. And although ZBrush had tools like Dynamesh before Sculptures Pro, the latter offered a more fluid and brush-based alternative. Basically, it allowed for a real-time remeshing, which complemented Dynamesh, by not requiring any pauses or actions between strokes. And one of the noticeable things we can talk about is simplicity and accessibility. You see, Sculptures was known for being incredibly simple, just a sphere and a few brushes. And ZBrush integrated this philosophy to a certain extent through UI elements like ZBrush Core and ZBrush Lite, inspired by Sculptures' beginner-friendly interface. I mentioned earlier that Sculptures' feature, Dynamic Tessellation, was a big thing. But how does it compare to Dynamesh? First of all, Sculptures Pro, or Dynamic Tessellation, as it was called, in comparison to Dynamesh, offer two very different workflows, I mean inside ZBrush, each suited to a different sculpting style. Sculptures Pro allows for real-time dynamic tessellation, as you sculpt. This means that as you draw final details, the mesh automatically adds polygons where needed, and removes them in less detailed areas, giving you localized control over resolution without ever having to stop the sculpting. It feels like working with clay actually, which adapts your strokes, making it great for organic modeling or maybe concept sculpting in addition to adding micro details without worrying about subdivision or topology. On the other hand, ZBrush's Dynamesh works by remeshing the entire model into a uniform grid 
and to activate it, usually, you need to manually reprocess the mesh. This makes Dynamesh ideal for blocking out large forms and quickly merging or reshaping geometry, but it doesn't preserve small details that well, especially after remeshing. Unlike Dynamic Tessellation or Sculptures Pro, Dynamesh doesn't adapt mesh density dynamically, I mean as you work. You see, it enforces consistency across the entire surface, which is great for maintaining an even topology early in the sculpt, but limiting when fine details are required. I think Pixelogic acquired Sculptures primarily to harness its innovative technology and integrate it into ZBrush, enhancing their flagship product. And to be honest, I would be tempted to do that too, if that was up to me. Think about it. Sculptures' tools like Dynamic Tessellation feature was a unique and a powerful addition to ZBrush's toolset, allowing them to offer a more versatile and intuitive sculpting experience. And while the acquisition did help Pixelogic stay ahead, I mean ahead of potential competition, by incorporating a promising free tool into their ecosystem, their main motivation was to leverage and expand upon Sculptures' technology. At the time, ZBrush's biggest competitor, I believe, was Mudbox. So by doing so, they could offer a seamless transition for users who started with the free Sculptures tool, and eventually wanted to move to a more advanced platform like ZBrush. This was clever, because this strategy not only enriched ZBrush's feature set, but also ensure that Pixelogic remained at the forefront of digital sculpting technology, which is true till this day, by the way. So, by integrating Sculptures' features, Pixelogic organically expanded their user base, which was expected, appealing to both beginners and seasoned professionals, while mitigating any risk that Sculptures would grow into a direct competitor. So, instead of facing off against a free alternative, they folded its best aspects into their own ecosystem creating a more comprehensive and attractive product for users at all skill levels. But what about the community of Sculptress? The community actually had a mixed reaction, I mean to the acquisition of Pixelogic. On the positive side, many users were excited about the potential of Sculptress's features to be integrated into ZBrush seeing it as an opportunity for the technology to evolve and reach a broader audience. Plus, it wasn't bought by any company, because Pixelogic is actually built upon the reputation of ZBrush, so you would expect that they will use it wisely. A lot of people appreciated that Sculptures' core cool functionality would live on within ZBrush, which offered more advanced tools and a professional-grade environment. However, there were also concerns and disappointments among the community. They worried that Sculptress, as a standalone and a free and a lightweight tool, might not receive further updates or support in its original form for that matter. This concern proved valid, as Pixelogic eventually discontinued development on Sculptress, focusing on integrating its features into ZBrush instead. Overall, while some lamented the end of Sculptress as an independent product, most users acknowledged that its legacy continued through ZBrush, benefiting from the broader toolset and continued development that Pixelogic offered. And hopefully ZBrush now continues to be developed under Maxon and not receive the same fate of other software. And there you have it guys. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Also, you can subscribe to this channel to receive more videos like this. Thank you guys very much for watching and I will see you in the next one.